That's what I want. Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Those hens back there are making a racket. It's morning, it's egg laying time, and today is one of the biggest days of the year for us. It's like a holiday. It's the day we release the cattle out onto pasture. And in honor of that, I'm making a special dinner tonight. This is called the steak method. It starts on one end, it burns all the way around. Great for smoking meats on a Weber grill, but you gotta remember, it's gotta burn counterclockwise. It's true. You see, heat and fire only travel in a counterclockwise direction. We're gonna load her up today because leftovers are always good. The first thing I have here is what I call a reverse cowboy cut pork belly combination spare rib. <laughs> Butchered here on the farm. And then I have, in the spirit of thriftiness, some pork bones. These are up toward the neck there from, from the same pig. We're gonna put them on there. There's some meat on them and they're frozen. Doesn't matter, you can put them right on frozen. Close the lid. We gotta sort these guys. To do that, I'm gonna man the gate, which is kind of a, job that takes the most abuse. And Hillary's gonna shoo out the ones we don't want. Titus is coming. Well, Titus rushed the door, so we're gonna have to go to plan B. Right, Titus? Okay. There you go. Go ahead. Go. After a little bit of sorting back and forth, we have Hillary here. <laughs> And we have the two bulls over in the north side of our pen here, where the hay is. We got one guy in jail here, and the rest of them are just floating around in the pen, so we're gonna open this gate, and they're gonna be happy. All right, you can go that way. Find you guys. Can you let him out of jail? Hey. Yeah, go out and join your mates. Everybody's in a stir. They're already head button. They know something's gonna happen. This is the last time I'm gonna be closing this gate until the end of July. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not giving you enough attention that direction. And the bulls are gonna be in their bachelor pad until then. On a farm as small as ours, this is the least stressful method to keep the bulls away from the cattle until it's time to breed them again. We used to release them into the winter pasture right out back here of the barn, but they whined and complained and were generally unhappy out there because they could smell and see the cattle. Here in the barn, they can't smell or see the cattle. They're far enough away and they're a lot more content, even though they're inside. <laughs> they're all stuck in the winter yard here and they're getting ready for me to release them to Nirvana. I think I'll just wait for about a half hour or so. Is that all right with you guys? I'm trying to build suspense here. I'm trying to build suspense, you know? You guys are good with that, right? I thought so, Patty. I do like being able to torment the cattle once in a while. Especially Patty. All right, you miscreants, the gate opens this way. Come in. Square gears are turning. There we go. <laughs> What's that green stuff? We haven't had that in a while. We got a couple here that the square gears didn't turn for. No, that's not the way out. <laughs> you gotta go that way. Don't, boy. You got a bad habit there, buddy. There goes one. This guy, I don't know, he just doesn't get the program. Come on. Yeah, you're a kicker too. I'm keeping my distance. There you go. I declare this winter pasture closed for the season.
Somebody's still belly aching. We got to get to them. Lots to eat out here, guys. They sure are happy. Those guys over there, however, they're not very happy. Bulls, oblivious. I almost forgot about the blinky blink. I gotta turn this off. And I gotta hook up this one wire which will make all of the cattle fencing on the farm live. That's good. That's darn good. Little leakage. Out here at the Grove, it's even better. 10,000 volts, 4.1 milliamps leakage. Excellent. You all remember this gate, right? It's been a while since I've been through it. This goes to the cattle pastures. You'll be seeing that a lot. And in here we have the cattle loafing area, which we call the Grove. They're a shady spot to get a drink. And this is the gate here in the back of the upper barn that leads from the field that the cattle are in back to the Grove behind the camera. This here, is the Maginot line, or no man's land between breedable heifers and the rest of the cattle. Gotta check the meat. 300 degrees. Thawed. Getting there. Look at the pear tree blooms. Very pretty. And the apples. Very pretty. I'm getting to it, just hold your horses. So I gotta take down the Maginot line here and we don't have to mess with this too often so we don't put gate handles on this, it's just wired in. And yes, the fence is still on, it really doesn't bother me that much. 10,000 volts is just a tickle, that's all. All right, ladies, I've tormented you long enough. I think they're interested. Watch out, ladies. I gotta get this wire out of here. We had some creative heifers this winter, so hence the cob job. Are you ready, gals? You were born ready, weren't you? Yeah, you're gonna chew on me, 2105. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, you gotta move. None of that kicking stuff. Come on, you got the idea. <laughs> Let me out of here. <laughs> you too, you can go. They say, this looks like good grass. We're gonna park right here for a minute. We've been looking at this grass for a long time wanting to eat it. This heifer yard is also closed for the season. Well, not really, I'll explain it. A little bit on cattle psychology. So cattle get used to the areas that they're allowed to come into. And when you open a new area, the first thing they do is they go to explore it. This heifer yard, we keep closed, but when we start loading out animals for butcher, we load them into this yard. And when we open the gate, everybody rushes in to see the new space. And if we open the pen gate over there, they'll rush in to see that space, makes them easy to catch. If we left this open year round, they just laze in and out of here. But when you open it on the day you want to load them, they come right in. Well, I really thought these ladies would rush out to join the main herd, but they're going to take their time. Next job. Look at all this grass to eat. They're on a big lot. It goes all the way around the corner here and into our chicken field. And the cattle haven't left the chicken field yet. It's the season of wet grass and also the season when I realized my old boots are leaking and I need a new pair. Here they all come. Rusty, how are you? Eh, you got bird things to do. You already got burdocks on you. There they go. These guys know better than go all run around when they got plenty to eat right under their feet. They're coming back around. Yeah. 
You're all dirty. You've been rolling in the mud. Hi, guys. Hey, monsters. Hello. Pigs, meet cows. Uh-huh, your neighbors all winter long. I'm gonna put a little Montreal steak seasoning on this. This is just kind of step one of seasoning here, and it doesn't take much. Just a little bit to begin with. Hose heaven. Let's find a hundred foot hose. I think that one will do. Oh, the cattle came around and they found the grove. Now they're wondering where the water is. Hi guys. I gotta fill this up for you. The heifers are integrating with the herd. See the pushing match there? That's what they do, they gotta find their place. They found the mineral, they found the shade. Stretch out this hose. Gotta go around here. Hook it up to the Y in the heifer yard stock tank. We're gonna need this stock tank for when we have animals in here that are getting ready to go to butcher. I don't think that's got a washer in it. Nope, it doesn't. I'll have to go get a washer. Actually, I'm gonna disconnect this tank so I can turn it over and let it dry out and wash it before anybody else gets in here. Good idea. This is kind of like playing operation. Secure the float valve without getting shocked. Oh. Can you see that over there? The cattle are standing on top of the piles that the contractor left for the barn addition. King of the mountain. I don't think old Amos, the contractor, is going to be very happy when he finds cow poop on his gravel. He's going to be awful mad at you guys. Cows will always try and find the highest point, and they'll stand there. The one thing they cannot do is paw at these gravel piles and start to spread them out. If I see them starting to do that, then they're coming off of this field and going someplace else. I just wanted to get this field cleaned off first thing of the year because they're not going to be able to go back onto it until the barn addition is complete because the contractor is going to be coming through here and I, we're going to have chickens out here in a week. Water. Dump the heifer yard water and leave this upside down for storage. Close the heifer's gate from the barn. Bail out the water trough in the barn. Clean out the water trough. And put this trough in the other side of the cattle pen for the bull. We don't need a float valve on this one because just two animals, we won't need to fill it that often. We won't even fill it if I only leave it halfway. Clean out the bull's mineral tub here. And then sit down, take a break, enjoy the shade, listen to the chickens, smell the pork cooking. Right over there. It smells really good. I'm getting hungry. And the chickens are very loud. They need to tell us that they're, you know. <laughs> they laid an egg. Yeah, they're very proud. After they lay an egg, they'll stand at the door like that gal did and proclaim they laid an egg. Huh? I'm happy for you. This particular pig had a lot of fat in the pork belly. It's very fatty pork belly, and I found a good way to deal with that. First, I cook it. For about four hours, the way I have, still attached to spare ribs, and that helps keep the ribs nice and moist. And when I carve off the belly like this, I leave some of that meat on the spare ribs. That's a good spare rib. And then I take the pork belly and I cut it into cubes. See, that's fatty pork belly. I think this is about the fattiest pork belly I've cooked. There's not much lean in it at all. After I've got it all cubed up, I Dose it with seasoning, same stuff. And then toss it in it. Shake it around. <laughs> I lost one. We won't tell anybody about that. And then I put the pork belly back on the grill to cook down real good. It gets real crisped up, shrinks down, a lot of the fat melts up, concentrates the smoke. And it's kind of like eating cracklins a little bit. Very rich, you don't want to eat very many at a time, but very good. These neck bones and ribs come off. Now these spare ribs and bones have been in the smoker long enough to have lots of that nice smoke flavor in them. I cover them up and I put them in the oven for the rest of the day so that they get, you know, falling apart -y. 
Especially these neck bones. You want them to be falling apart. -y. What's going on in here? What are you doing, Hell? I put the big tray in the back to try and get them to go back there and eat. Oh. With the grower in it. The this first feet. batch of broilers that we do, and we have these pens which are eight foot long and three foot wide. We leave them in here for four weeks instead of three weeks because we're waiting for the weather to get a little less dicey. So we open up this back pen to them so they can go through this little hole here and into the back pen. And here's the young batch. These guys are a week old. These guys here are getting pretty big. They're ugly. They're entering their ugly teenager phase. What a beautiful day. Perfect day to turn the cattle out on the pasture. Let's go out and see how they're doing. You got burdocks all over you. So do you. So do you. So do you. Hey Coco, you look very pregnant. Hey little one. Sally, how are you? Daffodil, how are you? The mama cows are very pregnant with their calves. Hillary keeps track of the due dates and I don't remember off the top of my head. I think they're due within, the first ones are due within a couple weeks and we're having, should be having eight or nine calves this year. Here's where they got into the burdocks. These are all stripped. We'll eat a little bit and then headbutt. All that winter muddle wash right out of them and they'll start to lose their coats and slick off for the summer here. They're already starting to lose some of it. Somebody got shocked by the fence. I guess that'll teach you. These two are still mixing it up over here. One of the heifers that came out from the pen, I'm sure. Yeah, it is one of the heifers. You guys gotta learn to get along. You will. Hey, you. Yeah, you got burdocks too. This is about my favorite thing when the cattle go out on pasture, coming out here and walking around with them, talking to them, watching them eat, enjoying the weather. I guess this is where it's at for me. Hi. Welcome home from school. We put the cows out today. I'm sorry, I have nothing to say. <laughs> There's pork cooking for dinner. Yeah. I mowed the lawn. What about that piece? Oh, I wish you could smell this. Here are the bones out of the oven. Here's the pork belly. Look how much they shrunk. These are like concentrated flavor. The fat flavor is all concentrated. The lean remains here. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the bones, the spare ribs and the neck bone. Here, let me get a piece. Because it's customary to offer the guest the first bite. No? Here? I'm trying. Just take it. No, I'll eat it. The end of any successful day is a good dinner. And I'm so glad we got the cattle out today. First batch of broiler chickens are going out on the pasture next week. Summer is underway. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I'm going in to eat.